Today, I'm going to teach you on the five keys to activating the prophetic word, using the story of Elijah at Mount Carmel as an example of how he did it. Make sure that you take a moment and subscribe to this YouTube channel. Make sure to hit that notification bell that every time we upload a new video, you get notified. And if you would like to receive daily prophetic words straight to your email, click the link down in the description area below, as well as you can see many ways that you can also connect with us by clicking the other link. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever received a prophetic word, but were unaware of how to activate it? I want to give you some practical tips in this video that you can take when activating your personal prophecy. Let me use the prophet who demonstrates and activates all the action steps that are needed during his experience at Mount Carmel in 1 Kings 18, where we see a very vivid picture of what is taking place. For example, the, the waters of the river were flowing steadily towards the Mediterranean Sea. Blood covered the shores and probably seeped into the water's edge. The bodies of the recently slaughtered prophets of Baal laid around Elijah's feet. Moments earlier, we get to see where Mount Carmel had an experience where they seen the fire of God flash down from heaven and consume Elijah's sacrifice and ended the discussion on who the true God really was. Suddenly, Elijah's eyes widened and he lifted his head. And I heard a sound of abundance of rain, he said. Immediately, the prophet's words moved King Ahab into action. Elijah wasn't quite finished yet. He was totally determined at this point to activate his prophetic word. I want you to write this down. Your response is based on receiving. What am I saying right now? How we respond to a prophetic word determines what we receive from the Lord. Write this down as well. It is important to understand that our doubt does not cancel God's plan over our life. It just reveals that we aren't participating with Christ in seeing the outcome. Let me shift gears for just a second because I want to share something with you and what I'm about to say next needs to have some clear understanding. Your lack of faith at times during the learning and growth process of your life does not stop you from seeing God's plan. Look at the disciples in the boat for a second. Do you realize how scared they were, how fearful they were? They were even feeling like they were going to die when this storm arose on the sea. And they look back and see Jesus sleeping in the back of the boat. It makes you wonder if they felt like Jesus was sleeping on their prayers. Let me ask you a question right now. Have you ever felt like that? This was a very scary experience for them. Yet in the middle of their doubt, Jesus got up and calmed the storm, meaning your lack of faith at times in your current situation doesn't stop God from showing up and doing a miracle in your life. And it also means that the disciples got to see the miracle, but didn't have the opportunity to participate in doing the miracle themselves with Christ. What am I saying? Participation is key. We must learn to participate and live from the prophetic words of God that are given to us. There's another story in 2 Kings 7 that illustrates this principle very clearly. During the severe famine, Elisha prophesied food was coming and would be priced very inexpensively, something that didn't happen during a time of famine when supply was scarce. And the captain on whose hand the king leaned said to the man of God, if the Lord himself should make windows in heaven, could this thing be? But he said, you shall see with your eyes, but you shall not eat of it. Why would anyone in their right mind publicly contradict the word of God? Well, it's either one, they just don't know or understand. Or two, 
It's just pride or unbelief. Notice that although the captain doubted Elisha's word, it didn't stop the prophecy from being fulfilled. It only ensured that he wouldn't partake in the manifestation. Did you see what I just said? God will still manifest for those who doubt, but they won't do the most vital part of the activation of prophecy. That is to be in agreement with the Holy Spirit while doing it. We read in the scripture the next day when a full supply of food was available, the people rushed to buy it. Trampling the captain at the gate, he saw the completion of this prophetic word, but he couldn't participate in the blessing. The key to activation is preparing for the prophetic word, learning to steward a prophetic word. Let's go back to Elijah at Mount Carmel. He heard a sound of abundance of rain in the midst of drought. However, he didn't put his life on cruise control and expect God to do the rest. Let me show you the steps necessary for God's word to come to pass in your life, just like it did for Elijah. Here are five keys to activating a prophetic word over your life. Number one, Elijah's sacrifice, obedience to God. Matthew 9, 13 tells us this, God desires mercy, not sacrifice. The miracle was in the prophetic word. Our agreement to the word unlocks the blessing. We see in this scripture, he has already taken the first steps to provoking God's favor. Many people think the animal was the key to this sacrifice on the altar, that it was a seed. It wasn't. Animals were everywhere in the drought. The real seed was in the water that was poured out over the sacrifice. We know it was true because of the type of harvest he received. It wasn't the abundance of animals. It was the abundance of rain. Number two key here is Elijah seeked God. As soon as he heard the sound of rain, he went on the top of Mount Carmel and began to pray. When you receive a word for your life, pray. Ask God, what do you see? What do you hear? What do you think? What would you speak right now? How do you feel? Write these things down and then make changes by doing what you hear your father doing. The Lord will show you in prayer how to do this. Number three, I want you to notice that Elijah stayed in faith of God's word. God's word was the seed. He activated that word given by God. As Elijah prayed, he had the opportunity to doubt God's word at any time. His servants even continued to look towards the sea, reporting no clouds. Every time his servants returned with a negative report, what did Elijah do? Elijah had the opportunity to doubt, right? But he didn't. Elijah said, go look again. He refused to give up on the word of God that was given to him. Every day, you will have multiple opportunities to doubt God's word. Trust me. You have to make up in your mind that no matter what you see or hear, you will continue to walk in faith. You will take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ to believe the prophetic word that God has given to you. The fourth thing Elijah did is Elijah spoke from God. He didn't put himself in position to get a second opinion. Nothing's wrong with getting godly counsel, but there's some times that you have to understand you're going to confound the wise. So you must always take God's word to the word of Jesus himself to see what he hears, speaks, thinks, and feels about each and every situation. We see this in scripture where soon as the situation began to change, Elijah jumped up from prayer, continued down the mountain, and he told King Ahab to get on his chariot and get back to the city and not allow the rain to stop him. That was faith. Not only was there no rain, but there were also no clouds aside from the small little one his servant reported. Elijah continued to speak what his father told him, regardless of what he's seen in the realms around him. 
even if you have to create and set up a confession habit in your life, saying that God's word says, aligning your words to the prophetic word God is giving you, refusing to feel or think or see without taking them first to the spirit of Christ Jesus in you and see what he thinks. Learn to speak by Jesus, by faith, into the feelings, the thoughts, and the senses that you have in you. Train them by faith to live in the Spirit. Here's a key note. Stop orphanizing your senses, your feeling, and your mind. Rather, I want you to do this. I want you to not look at them as a problem child, or they will keep running off like a prodigal son. Don't orphanize them. Train them. The fifth key, Elijah set himself in position. He gathered up the garments and prepared to run. The question is, is how can you set up yourself in position? Here is an active key that you can write down. What actions are the Lord asking you to do next? Elijah knew that he had to prepare what God has given him. He gathered it up and remembered the obstacle sometimes is just stepping out and living from the word. Now take your life situations to the Lord and ask him what he sees and feels and hears. Let him tell you what needs to be removed or added to your life to be able to accomplish the word that he's put in you. It is important to remember that God's word has already been finished. It is a finished work in your life. We have to take action to be in position to run with the prophetic word. Start today and believe that you can and will run with divine momentum and do the impossible as Isaiah wrote. We will mount up like eagles and run and not grow weary, walk and not faint. Now I wanna hear back from you what you got most out of this prophetic teaching. Drop a comment down below. Let us know how we added value to your life. Also, feel free to add value to this message. Make sure that you received your daily prophetic words. And remember, we love you.